What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Like, I didn't. I just forgot what time it is. But anyway, so happy New Year's, you guys. Um, this is the first Real Talk video for the motherfucking New Year's. So happy New Year's. It is January 2nd, but by the time y'all see this, it'll be January 3rd, okay? So today is really special to me, so I promise you guys, I swear, I know y'all gonna be like, bitch, you always say that, but this video is not gonna be, like, no two hours, okay? Like, I be telling y'all, I am not trying to make myself into no motion fucking picture. It's not about to be two hours. It's probably going to be 45 minutes, an hour at best, because today my grandson turned three. Today is his birthday. We are going to Chuck E. Cheese. You know where it all goes down in Chuck E. Cheese. Honestly, I did not know that there'd be so many brawls, brawls and fights at Chuck E. Cheese. Like seriously, I had to look it up on YouTube because my husband told me yesterday and I was like, what? At Chuck E. Cheese? And then when I looked it up, I was just like astonished. Like, wow. You motherfuckers really don't know how to act at a goddamn kid's birthday party. Like, who the fuck does that? Either way, I'm glad that we don't have those issues because we don't have people to invite. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't have no friends. And I damn sure don't have no family and family members that just don't get along. And I'm pretty sure I do. But they ain't here in Arizona. So, I really don't have to worry myself about... People acting motherfucking crazy, okay, at fucking Chuck E. Cheese. And why do I feel like my video, I know when I'm looking at the camera, it's tilted. But let's see, on the screen, it doesn't look like it. So, okay, there we go. But now I feel tilted. Anyway, if I'm looking lopsided, that's not my big ass head. That's just the way the camera's positioned. But the lighting is awesome. And this is not a natural sunlight, okay. This is my ring light. And the lights around me. So, yes, this video is not going to be major long. All right. I hope you guys had, like, an amazing Christmas, an amazing New Year's, and all that good stuff. Because I sure did. And this 2018. So, with that being said, we're going to bring this in with the blast from the past. And ain't really that fucking past. But this is Slay All Day. Primer. As well as... Setting um, setting spray. You can use it for both. For those who be like, you only supposed to use it after it reads, it reads on the bottle that you can use it for both. Okay? Yes. Today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use this um, strobe cream by MAC. I have yet to use this. Well, I have used it once. I mean, like, I don't really see, like, the big deal about it. But we're going to use this today. Because I did not put anything on my face except for clean it. You know what I mean? And I'm going to just use a different foundation today. And I ain't going to use a different contour because y'all know I love my um, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil um, contour. That's my go-to. And as many other contour colors as I have, that's the one that I absolutely love the most. So other than that... Um, like I said, I'm not going to try to make this long, but just hurry up and get through it. My week has been amazing. Um, uh, let's see. What else? Let me tell you, I went to the emergency room the other day. I can't really remember what day it was, but it was because, you know, it was that time of the month for me again. And this time, I just really couldn't take it. I just really couldn't take the pain. But I had took a pill like... I thought I took it. I honestly did. I went upstairs. I sat in front of my desk and I thought I took this pill. Focus, camera, please focus. Okay. Which was uh, the naproxen. My friend Devin told me about using the Why does it keep doing this? Okay. My friend Devin told me about using the naproxen because she has the same issues. She has to get a hysterectomy. And let me tell y'all, them three days of pain was only a half a day. I was so happy. I was just so fucking happy with that, um, that I didn't have to go through the pain. But let me tell you, I went to the emergency room because I just couldn't take the pain anymore. I forgot to take the pill. I thought I did. I honestly thought I did. You know, when you get so busy into doing things that I just forget, not a lot, but I forget things sometimes. So, um, in the midst of me thinking that I took the pill, which I actually didn't, you know, I went downstairs and, you know, like major pain was like stricken upon me. And, um, 
This is the new Morphe palette. I got my own now, okay? Um, and this eye look is not even going to be anything intense. Um, so major pain had stricken upon me, and Tati was like, my daughter was like, well, you want to take, take a pill? And I was like, I can't. I just took one. Let me tell you, we went to the emergency room because I was in so much pain. And we got there. There was like 50 people up in that emergency room seriously waiting i would say like 40 to 50 people 50 at most all right and this was like at 12 o'clock at night oh my god i was like i'm not about to stay here because for one there's like 50 people ahead of me there's no way i'm going to be seen until like six o'clock in the morning so i took my ass home but mind you the reason why all these people was there was because they had face masks on and everything. And I was like, listen, I don't want to sit here because I'm not trying to catch no epidemic. What the fuck is going on with all these people in here at one time? There is some type of epidemic. Like on some real shit, it seemed like it was like the zombie pop books, zombie apocalypse. Like everybody was coming down with some type of epidemic. And if they cough near your ass, you was going to catch that shit and motherfucking change and morph into some crazy shit. So I fucking left. Tati called another hospital. It was the same way. This shit was like an apocalypse. Like, what the fuck is going on? The world is coming to an end. No, these motherfucking people was all in there because they had the goddamn flu. Let me tell you something. I have never had the flu before in my life. And I know and I hear that it is really, really bad. And, you know... It causes death between the young and the old. I've never had the flu. I've never had a flu shot or anything of that nature, which I am very grateful for. But damn, there was like a lot of fucking sick people. Like, let me tell y'all, I went home and sat down. And then when I finally went upstairs, why did I see that fucking naproxen pill on my desk? I was like, you know what, April, you are so fucking stupid how did you think you took it i let me tell you guys i get really busy and i think i do some i did something and then i totally forget and i'm pretty sure that i'm not the only one that's like that but seriously i totally thought that i had took that pill because i was coming upstairs to go to bed and i was going to take an aspirin honestly just because i didn't want to take any more of them that fucking 500 milligram was sitting right on the damn desk. I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm so glad that she told me about that. Naproxen. Um, she calls it naproxen. It's nap it is called nap naproxen and then there's naproxen. They're the same. One's generic, something like that. Let me tell you. Lengthened, shortened the days of my freaking period and made my time so much better. Along with that, I used one of these LED light heating pads on myself too that my mom has sent me <sighs> days were so much better but anyway so other than that i have not really been up to much of anything i'm so excited because um well by the time this video goes up you guys have already have seen the video that i posted yesterday which is really today but i'm gonna just say yesterday which is the platinum blonde wig step by step walk through talk through whatever you want to call it very detailed video on how i created my um sandy platinum blonde wig you know i don't really like to wear my hair too platinum so yeah did i just fuck it up right here fuck it up fuck it up okay yeah um so big shout out to my tinky because it's his third birthday he, he know he drive me crazy, but big shout out to my Tinky. Y'all know my grandson. Um, then my other grandson, uh, he'll be four, five. He'll be five on the 12th. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting old. They grow up so damn fast. Also, um, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm preparing to leave. I have... By the time this video goes up, it'll be the four, two exactly 14 more days before I'm in New York, and I'm excited about that. I cannot wait, okay? Really excited. Um, see my family. I would say, I was about to say family and friends, but I bet you ain't got no friends, so that's all good. 
So, as I was going to say, oh, I look like shit right now. But by the time this video goes over, I will look really cute, okay? So, I was about to say, now, now we're going to get into the video. If you have a Real Talk video or a Real Talk episode or anything like that that you would like me to hit upon, meaning you guys want me to talk about it. If you've got some tea you want to spill about somebody you don't like, um... Why's my face so red right there? Um, if you have some tea you want to spill about somebody your ass don't like, or you just got some shit that you want to get off your chest, or anything like that, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, Real Talk. And also, if you want to change the names of the people in your email, for the video you can always go ahead and do so and let me know like hey april i went ahead and changed the names of those mentioned in my email because you know you might just think that the whole world is talking about your ass or knows it's about you and if you don't put the name change then i'm going to just automatically assume that you did or I'm just going to assume that you didn't care, or I might just change it. Either way, you can always say I've already went ahead and changed the names or whatever, whatever. But yeah, you can go ahead and send me an email to um, muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Put in the subject line, real talk, and yada, yada, yada. So on that note, let's get into this real talk, okay? All right, you guys, so this one here is a nice lengthy one. Let's get into this. Hey, April, I hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for taking the time to read this email. I watch all your Real Talk videos and love them. Now I need a little advice for my own, or of my own, excuse me. For the purpose of this video, you can call me Ivy. I have been in a relationship with my now ex-boyfriend for four years prior to us breaking up. Our five-year anniversary would have been January 14th of 2018. He broke up with me about three weeks ago, and he claims it was because he was going through a lot of things. About two weeks before our breakup, he became a completely different person. He wasn't the sweet guy I once knew. He was cold and insensitive. If I cried, he wouldn't come for me, and he just didn't seem to be present mentally or emotionally when we were around each other. At this point, I knew a breakup was coming. He had just received a supervisor position, and he claims the stress was getting to him, which is understandable. And he says he didn't want to put me through his mood swings and everything else he was going through. But I don't know how much of that is true, considering the fact that he told me during our breakup that I was the issue and that it was all me, and because of the little arguments we have been having lately. When we broke up, it was bad, and we left off on bad terms, but we soon realized we still have love for one another and ended up talking again shortly after. He told me he wanted to work towards us getting back to where we used to be and that he wants to continue to try, but I don't understand this at all. Why break up with me if you're claiming it's not my fault, but that it's something you caused, and then you say you want to work on us being together again? After saying this, the first week after we broke up, he was still not giving me what I needed. He was ignoring my texts and just being rude. It wasn't until I told him I'm done trying and just leave me alone that he changed his tune. He was so sad and mad and even cried, which I never seen him do. He begged for me to give him a chance to show that he wouldn't hurt me again. It just seems to me that he doesn't want to commit, which is strange after being together for almost four for almost five years. We still hang out. We just don't live together anymore. When we are together, it's great. He has been doing things for me that he hasn't done in the past, and it makes me very happy, like texting me good morning, even mornings, every morning, and he's been buying me gifts. But when I ask him about us getting back together again, he says that he needs to learn to be a better boyfriend to me first. But I don't know if I believe this. People on the outside keep telling me that I'm just being strong, being strung along because it seems like he loves being with me and being around me, but doesn't want to commit to me after almost five years. Maybe he just loves the freedom he has being a single man and not having to deal with the girlfriend. And that's why he's not committing. And he's just making it seem as though he's doing this all for me and that he broke up with me for my own good. I need your help. Do you feel as though I'm being strung along or do you think he actually wants to work on us? Thanks for all of your help. Best regards, Ivy. 
So, seems like Ivy is being not strung along, but it's being like, uh, yeah, basically strung along, like play for a fiddle. You know what I'm saying? Like you ever be with somebody and or a guy, just like you, you, you've been in a relationship with a guy, you know what I'm saying? And they just be like, um, um, this is Estee Lauder Double Wear, and this color is Toasty Toffee, you guys. Um, dang, hold on, guys. I forgot my brush. Okay, so y'all ever be, um, ever been in a relationship with somebody, a guy, or whatever, and, um, it doesn't seem like it's going good, and it doesn't seem like it's going bad. It's kind of like in the middle, you understand what I'm saying? And then they give you that, well, I'm not good for you, it wasn't you, it was me kind of thing. or You know what I'm saying? I just find that to be weird when somebody says that it wasn't you, it was me. Like To me, it, it starts to seem like, are you breaking up with me because there's somebody else? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like... What the fuck is it? Because in the beginning, he told her that he broke up with her because, you know, he was going through stuff. He was having mood swings. He was stressed out because of work. And he didn't want to put her through the stress. And she can understand that because, you know, she noticed the change in him. But here's my thing. When you're in a relationship with somebody, and five years is a long time, okay, you're not supposed to break up with somebody because you feel like you're going to be in a bad fucking mood. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, I'm going through some shit, so I, I want to break up with you type thing. Like, I don't know if anybody does that. Like, I mean, I know there are people that do that, but I find, like, that to be an excuse. I don't really think, like, okay, so because I'm in a bad mood for the day and I'm just going through shit in general, like life in general, the things that I'm going through are not involving you, meaning you're not the cause of the stress in my life. It's my job and whatever. Why would you want to break up with somebody? Like, so you're stressed the fuck out for one. That's why you're breaking. You're already stressed out. Okay. But for two, you're going through shit. When you go through shit, don't you want somebody to be there for you? Like, seriously. Like, it seems like ever since I watched this Eco Tools brush, it just keeps shedding. Um, like, when you're going through shit, don't you want somebody to be there for you? Like, I know when I go through some shit, I want somebody to be there for me. I don't know about y'all motherfuckers, but for me, like, I don't want to go through shit alone. Who the hell wants to go through shit alone? Like, that would just suck. So... She did notice the change in him, like, you know, oh, he's moody, or he doesn't text back, or he doesn't text at all, he's rude, and shit like that. So she noticed that change, but then they broke up because he, you know, felt like his mood swings, he was going through shit. Like, I know this. I don't want to break up with somebody when they're going through something. Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. So now you're not only going through shit because of your job and just life and shit in general, but now you're going through more shit. Like, that to me is just an excuse. I find that to be really flaky, and I also find it to be a fucking excuse. Like, have you guys ever broke up with somebody when, okay, you just went through some shit. You, you, you just got a new position at work. And you was like, oh, it's just stressing me out. I'm going to just break up with my boyfriend of five years because this is just too much for me, the job. And I don't want to be moody to him. If that's really your boyfriend or the person that you're supposed to be with, they're going to support you and they're going to hold you down and they're going to help you get through shit. They're not going to break up with you because they're going through some shit. And granted... Why would I break up with you because you're stressed the fuck out about something that is totally not involving me? Like, I, I just find that to be, I'm so pissed off about this brush. I just find that to be like a really big lie and excuse of not wanting to be bothered with the person. That's just, that's just me. That's how I feel about it. But I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we all be wrong. But I find that to be an excuse. And so now they've broken up for like three weeks or whatever, three to four weeks, they got back together, or a week, they got back together after a week or so, I think, and then they realized that they still have mad love for each other, I, I'm pretty sure you guys did realize that, you guys have been together for damn near five years, you should have love for each other, but here's the thing, she's got her friends, Ivy's friends are telling her, oh, he's just stringing her along, and then he's telling her, you know, he just, 
feel, feels like he needs to be a better boyfriend for her before they get back together. But this, this, he only says this when she starts saying stuff to him about, well, you know, basically getting back together. Now, here's the thing. I kind of thought they were back together because he's texting her every morning talking about good morning. He's calling her more often. He's buying her gifts and shit like that. Um, seeing her. So what the fuck is you texting me for every morning and making sure I'm okay and buying me gifts if we ain't back together? Seems like that are signs of a good boyfriend. That's what a good boyfriend would do. But when she speaks to him about, oh, well, let's get back together or anything about being together, he just keeps saying, well... I feel like I need to be a good boyfriend for you before we can get back together. I have never heard anybody ever in their life say, well, we're going to be friends and we're going to hang out together every day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that for you. But I just don't feel like I'm a good boyfriend for you yet. Here's the thing with that. This is just me. If this nigga feel like he's not a good boyfriend for you, why don't he feel like he's a good boyfriend for you? What the hell is he doing? That is making him feel like he is not a good boyfriend for you. Okay? Because from what you're telling me, meaning he done, he call you every morning and say good morning. You know what I'm saying? He say good morning every morning. And I get that too. I don't get a text message every morning. I get a fucking phone call at like, it'll be like 4.30 in the morning my time. You know what I'm saying? I'll get a text. I'll get a call and we'll be on the phone for like five minutes. This is my husband. Every single morning when he goes to work. Okay. So I get that. And that's signs of being a good boyfriend. You know, this is what you do when you're being a good boyfriend. But nobody ever titles themselves as not being a good boyfriend unless they're doing some shit behind your back. Granted, he might be around you a lot or you might hear from him a lot. But what makes him assume that he is not being a good boyfriend? The qualities that he's showing you, meaning, oh, I'm going to go hang out with Ivy. Oh, I'm going to go over and make sure Ivy's okay. Oh, let me call Ivy and say good morning to her. You know what I'm saying? Why does this like, I don't like this color now. So I'm going to go tell Ivy good morning. Oh, let me go buy Ivy some flowers and nice gifts and stuff like that. This is all the stuff that I'm going to do for Ivy right now because I'm trying to get in her good graces. I'm trying to work my way into being a good boyfriend, or at least I thought he was because she's saying all these things. So I'm thinking that, you know, he's doing all these things because he cares and he probably generally does care, but he's trying to win her back over. But in his mind, he's like, well, I don't feel like I'm a good boyfriend for you, you know, not yet. When she brings up, well, when are we going to get back together? Shit, nigga, you doing all this stuff for me. I thought we were back together. You know, you 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 calling me every morning. You bringing me gifts. You. This is what I think he's doing. Your friends might just be right. He might just be stringing you along. He's doing all these things because he don't want you to find interest in somebody else. That's what I'm starting to feel. You know what I'm saying? Because you asking him. When we gonna get back together? When we gonna be a thing? When we gonna be a couple? Now, how the fuck you gonna be around somebody and just be their friend and bring them gifts and call them every morning and just stay their friend after y'all been together for five years? That don't make no sense. So what I'm starting to think is this: that's your boyfriend. We gonna call him Ray Ray. Ray Ray just trying to get his cake, motherfucking ice cream, and some party favors. And eat it all and have fun with all of it at the same fucking time. That's just how I'm starting to feel because I'm sorry. I ain't about, I'm not about to be calling me personally. If we was in a relationship for five years and I was trying to get back in good with you. And I'm not going to be calling you every day. Okay. Every motherfucking morning and bringing you gifts all the time. And then keep telling you, well, I don't feel like I'm a good girlfriend for you yet. Nigga, I'm not going to keep doing all that shit. You either going to fuck with me or not. Bottom line. And if you don't want to, then you know what? I'm not going to keep calling you no more. And I damn sure going to stop the gifts. So my point is this. I'm thinking, like I'm thinking, this nigga is trying to string you along. 
and also have fun with whoever else. You know, maybe he don't want to commit. After five years, nigga, you should be committed to the girl. You just should be. But now, it's uh, I'm not a good boyfriend. So then all of this other time that we was together, all of these other years, and we had like a great relationship, what were you then? You were not a good boyfriend then? You was just what? This is what you need to ask him, Ivy. So, ooh. so all this other time that we was together... And we was in our relationship. What were you then? You were not. A, were you not a good boyfriend to me then? Also ask him. How do you analyze yourself as not being a good boyfriend? What are the things that make a good boyfriend? Because for one, a good boyfriend is someone who will not break up with you over foolishness about being stressed the fuck out. Everybody gets stressed the fuck out in life. Everybody gets motherfucking stressed out. I be stressed out all the t not all the time, but I get stressed the fuck out. That don't mean that I'm going to end a relationship with somebody because I'm stressed the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if that was the case, everybody would be breaking up with people. We all would break the fuck up with everybody. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, what makes a good boyfriend? Of course, a good boyfriend or a good girlfriend is being attentive. You know what I'm saying? Being attentive. Um... Communicating. Not cheating is definitely signs of good boyfriend skills, okay, or good girlfriend skills. You know what I'm saying? Those are signs of things like that. But what what is his goals of being a good boyfriend? Because it seems like to me, like I said, like he's having good boy boyfriend skills. Shit, the niggas call you every morning and he's bringing you gifts. Let me tell you something. Don't allow somebody to string you along for too long. This is not for too long. You got to... And when I say not for too long, because sometimes we might think that they're stringing us along and they really not. That could just be their way of communicating or that could just be their way of being scared or just trying to get in good or what happened. Oh, I got all of this gel all in my hair. Oh, my God. I got all of this freaking gel all in my hair. Anyway, oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, I hate gel. Now I'm going to have to, I got a baby wipe. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, I wonder... I wonder, maybe he's scared of commitment because it seems like it's starting to seem to me like he's he's scared of of committing to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know how like some guys are just really fearful of the unknown. They feel like being in a committed relationship is like the end of the world for them. They don't know what to do. And I think it has a lot to do with their friends telling them, man, listen, you too young. To be strung down with her. Man, listen. There's too much pussy out there. I, it's it's starting to feel like... It, it seems like, you know what, to me, it seems like two things, okay? The first one that I said, it seems like he he's just trying to string you along because he wants to have his cake, his ice cream, and his party favors and eat it too and play with it at the same fucking time, okay? But in the same aspect, he going to keep you strung along by buying you gifts and calling you every morning or texting you, just doing things to appease you, to keep you interested in him. Because if he doesn't do these things, of course you're not going to be interested in him. I know I wouldn't be. If you're ignoring me and you're not trying to pay me no attention and you're not trying to be there for me, nigga, I'm, I'm going to forget about you real quick. Um, but when you ask him about you two guys getting back together, it's like, okay, listen, I'm not a good boyfriend, okay? And then he says these things just to make it seem like it's not on you it's not your fault and it's him and but he's still trying okay he wants to work on you too this is what you you need to tell him to work on work on his motherfucking attitude okay because his attitude is nothing but negative nancy okay a bad boyfriend is not what he's doing but it's starting to feel like he's being a bad boyfriend by stringing you to fuck along now here's my things also it might not even be that. It might be that he's scared of commitment. However, how can you be scared of commitment after you've been with somebody for over four years? You've been together for five years, damn near. So what is there to be afraid of? Maybe he felt like your relationship with him 
was not going to be as lengthy. And now that you guys have been together for so long, marriage is coming up. Did you guys talk about marriage? You know, maybe you're not even interested in getting married, Ivy. You just want a more committed relationship. Like, you know, I understand that. You guys don't have to be actually married to be, you know, in a committed relationship. It's all about being faithful and trustworthy and just being there. That's what you call a committed relationship. It doesn't always have to do with paperwork because just because you're married don't mean that the relationship is going to be committed and that your husband is going to be there for you and he's going to be faithful. That fucking piece of paper don't mean none of that shit, okay? It damn sure doesn't. It's what it's supposed to mean, but in this day and age, it don't mean that. So I'm wondering, is he scared? Is he scared of the fact about getting married? Which you didn't mention, but, you know, some men just feel like it's cool to be a bachelor. It's cool to be single. I mean, hey, there's nothing wrong with being single. However, let me tell you this, Ivy. We don't get no younger, all right? And it's not cool to wait on somebody and wait for that one person, that particular person, to be ready to give in to you, okay? <laughs> me personally, if that were me, I'm not saying I would ditch him, but I would definitely, I would definitely ask him, well, what's your idea of being a good boyfriend? Since you keep saying that so much, what's your idea of being a good boyfriend? Please tell me what a good boyfriend does because it seems like some of the things that you're doing is good boyfriend skills, it's good boyfriend goals, but when you're throwing me off for a loop, that's definitely not even being a good friend. You need to ask him, what does he expect out of the relationship that you guys have going on now? You know what I'm saying? Also ask him, so what is this? Because you're calling me every morning, you're bringing me gifts, you're checking on me, you're hanging out with me. What, what is this that we have going on? I need to know because if this is not going to get anywhere, if we're not going to be um, in a committed relationship like we were, then I need to know this so that way I can make preparation to move on with my life. I'm sorry. You might be young, but ain't nobody got time to be wasting on somebody who really doesn't want to be with them. You need to ask him, is he scared of being in a committed relationship? Also, you need to ask him, what is he trying for? What is he working on with you guys? Because it's funny how you guys were together and everything was okay. And then he started getting stressed out. So you broke up. You also need to tell him this. Because I found like this is a, a to me, that was like a sign of disrespect. So he got stressed the fuck out and decided to break up with you. That's not fair to you. Okay. And then... On top of that, you want to get back together with me when it's convenient to you. And then you want to tell me, no, you're not a good boyfriend because it's convenient to you. And you want to work on things in our relationship because it's convenient to you. That's not how it works, okay? First of all, this is what you need to do. This is the number one key, sweetheart, all right? Stop giving in to that nigga, all right? Stop giving in to him. Point blank, period. I was really trying to be, like, really nice about it to him because there might be other issues. But here's the problem that we have as women. And I'll be the first to admit to it because we get in our feelings about men or we get in our feelings about women, vice versa. And then we start to give them everything. And that's cool when we're in a relationship and we want to give somebody everything. But it seems like sometimes a lot of people can take advantage of us being vulnerable, which really, really sucks. And I told you guys that before, like, last week about how, you know what I'm saying, I got in my feelings about my ex-husband not calling me or not call, answering the phone the day he moved in, which was, I was, that was valid. I don't give a fuck. I wish that shit was valid. I, I was valid to be in my feelings for that. But the thing about it is this. Sometimes we allow people to get in our heads. This is just my, this is just my opinion. When they notice that we are all into them and we vulnerable for them and we just give them our all, like meaning our, all of our attention, all of our time, just all of us in general, they seem like they just take advantage of that shit. And it's not like they can all walk all over us, but it just seems like for the most part, some of them may walk all over us with their actions or the way that they do things or the way that they handle us. And I know me personally, I don't like nobody manhandling me or not even when I say manhandling, meaning manhandling me, meaning taking advantage of me and just treat me any old type of way. Like I don't, I don't like shit like that at all. That's just one thing that I don't 
I don't fuck with. But also, I feel like this, like when we allow a person to see our weaknesses, definitely if our weaknesses are them, it just seems like it becomes an unattraction to them. You ever feel like, okay, like when I say unattraction, meaning like a weakness, basically. It's like a weakness to them. They 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 find they find our weak spot, like, oh, this bitch is really into me. You know what I mean? All I gotta do is text her and tell her good morning and I got her, just like I, I got her right where I want her to be, you know what I'm saying, which sucks, that's why I be feeling like, like, how do I put it, like, I'm not saying don't be in your feelings, but at the same time, you could be in your feelings, be, in, be on your P's and Q's, and be on your guard, you know what I mean, like, be in your feelings, love the person, and, and give them what they deserve, but don't let them, like, see your weak spots and your vulnerability and so now i'm feeling like with him he's seeing your vulnerability because you're sitting around waiting you allowing him to break up with you because he stressed the fuck out you're allowing him to bring you gifts and text you and you allowing him to hang out with you and shit like that like don't do that shit girl you got if he want to be a good boyfriend then you know what he gonna chase after you fuck that don't be convenient to him don't be his convenience don't be sitting there willing ready and waiting for the nigga you know what i'm saying because he bringing gifts or he bringing coffee or he bringing fucking text messages messages and phone calls to you that's cool that's nice and everything to do all of that for me yeah yeah that's what you're supposed to have been done did that and then then there okay you're supposed to have been done did that already but don't keep thinking that you're gonna continue to do that shit for me and then every time I bring up the fact about okay so what's up with me and you you want to be like oh well I'm not a good boyfriend you know what nigga you're not a good boyfriend and then the next time he say that shit what you need to do is let him know you know something you right you got it when you when when it's convenient to you or when you feel like you it's time for you to be a good boyfriend to me let me know and hopefully i'm not busy but just let me know but until then i'm gonna just move on meaning we friends we can stay remain friends because niggas hate that if you hit them with oh okay well we could be friends they don't like shit like that okay and maybe bitches don't need that but sometimes you gotta hit them with that shit because if you keep riding that shit out with them and allowing them to do that shit with you they're going to continue to do that shit. That's just like me. If this man, if I was with somebody that was rich and he just allowed me to keep going in his bank account, a bitch going to keep going in his bank account, all right? What the fuck? I ain't stupid. So I'm just saying, like, you got to put your foot down, Ivy, and let him know this bitch can be poison, okay? I could be poison, Ivy, today and let you have it and let you know, you know something? You texting me good morning, nigga, I'm not going to respond to you, okay? You you call my phone, nigga, I'm not going to answer it. You want to bring me a gift over? I'm not available today. I'm sorry. So you are his convenience, and you are going to be his convenience when he's ready and willing to be in a relationship with you again. That's why he is stringing you along, and that's why he keeps telling you I'm not a good boyfriend. But he likes to hang out with you. He likes to text you and talk to you, and he might even like to get the cookies from you too. But here's the thing, sweetheart. Don't be nobody's convenience. Don't let nobody string you the fuck along. String that nigga ass along. Meaning, don't be ready, willing, and available for that nigga any fucking more. R-W-A. Ready, willing, and available. Okay? You don't even have to have a conversation with him about, are you afraid of commitment? Are you scared? Or were you going to be a good boyfriend? Fuck all of that. Because now we get into emotional shit and ain't nobody got time for that shit. Not at all. This is what you need to do because sometimes you got to play hardball with them. And I've learned that the hard motherfucking way. You can't always be like crying to them about like, well, why you don't spend no time with me? I used to be that person with my ex-husband. You don't spend no time with me. You always run in the streets. That would be me. After a while, you know, that shit, I, I keep crying to you about it and you're not even changing. All right, bye. Oh. Why you don't, you acting on numb? Um, he started getting it after a while because I started not even caring. Not even that I wasn't even caring, but it was like, you know what? I'm over it now. I'm going to go do me. So then he noticed like I wasn't crying to him no more. He noticed that I wasn't like the same person because I got numb to that shit. And it's not, now it's time for April to grow up and enjoy her life. Nigga, if you don't want to be around and you want to run the streets, then go right the fuck ahead. But I know I'm not about to be crying to you about why you ain't come home at this time or why we ain't hang out or nothing like that. Nigga, when you come home, I'm going to be sleeping, okay? And don't try to be rubbing up on me because it ain't even working. Let me tell you something. You got to act like a boy, like Ciara said 
and Sierra says, and play if I was a boy, if I were a motherfucking boy, trust and believe that shit work all the time. So now when I have my little squabbles and disagreements with him on the phone, me, April talking, he, he sometimes get on my nerves and you know what I'd be like? Cause I feel the anger in me arising out of my chest. I'd be like, you know what? I'm going to speak to you another time. I love you. Bye. And I'll hang the phone up. Let me tell you, he will call me right back and I will not motherfucking answer. Or, or then if I don't answer, he'll text me hours later. Can we talk now? And I still don't answer. Because, nigga, I'm not even about to give in to you. This is where we went wrong with the shit. Not saying that you got to chase me, but you got to chase me. Point blank, period. So on that note, Ivy, let that nigga know, yes, yes, um, you're not getting a response back from me all the time. And I'll see you when I motherfucking see you. Point blank, period. End of story. Don't let nobody string you the fuck along. That shit is not worth it, for real. There are so many other people out there in the world that are worth your time. And if that nigga don't want to be committed to you, then that's fine. Move it along, nigga. Push the fuck along. It's 2018. So, give Ivy your opinion. I mean, like, I really tried to be understanding to dude, but because he was doing all these nice things. But that's just the facade. That's a cover-up. I ain't nobody trying to even hear that shit, for real. <laughs> So before I even get into the next real talk, so I got you got you guys already motherfucking know how I feel about Octoly.com. So you know I get all the goody good free shit, okay? All the good free stuff. I love I loves me some free stuff. So this time I got um the makeup by Ofra, which is the Nikki Tutorials collection. All right, she got some highlight in these three lip glosses in here. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, um. I ain't really crazy about one of these colors in this lip gloss, but the other two is like, eh, okay, you know, one is like a nude color, so I could do that. Um, but the highlight is bomb as hell. Now, I ain't like the hugest fan of hers because, I mean, it ain't even that I'm not the hugest fan of hers, but I just see a lot of filter with the makeup, meaning, girl, I know you're a fucking editing software be filtering because there's no way you could look like that. You look like a porcelain doll. And then I've seen pictures of you on it, like uh, from other people without your filters. So, but I mean, like she does good makeup and stuff like that. She does good makeup. She's like a whole different person. What, like seriously, without the makeup and with the makeup, she looks totally different. But you know, she's a pretty girl. I like her attitude and shit. I do like her attitude. I don't watch all her videos. Um, I have my favorite, which is Candy Johnson, and I've watched her forever, so that is my favorite. But I like free shit, so yes. Um, thank you, Ofra and Octoly. Now I do like the setup of this, and this freaking highlight is bomb as hell. Okay, so that is the one thing that I was waiting to put on to show you guys. It is a very pigmented, just like the other um, one I got from Oxley. But I think the other one that I got from Oxley is actually just this color right here by itself. Seriously. But it's called Everglow. Girls, do you see this? Look at this. Whoa. Okay. I don't know where the freak I'm going to put this at, but phew. And then this white one. Phew. And then this one right here. And I'm probably too close because the light is so bright. And I'm not really sure if it's all the way turned down. I'm going to turn it off for a second. So you guys can see what it really looks like. So look at that. This is that one. Then this one. They're very, very pigmented. They're very pretty colors, which is really nice. Um, so this is what they look like on the back of my hand. really nice um but not cheap um for the price of this i would rather i don't know it's they're nice but you know i like the packaging a lot now i like the way this is this stood up now this liquid lipstick here is called new nude potion this one is my favorite one okay because you guys know it's a light color i love pinks it reminds me of my saint laurent color right here it reminds me of my um, Yves Saint Laurent one, which is from Oakley as well. This is the Yves Saint Laurent. They're like in the same color family. See them next to each other. They're very close. Um, yeah, so this one is like my favorite one. And then this one here would be my second favorite one, which is Coven. It's a very metallic color. It's a very pretty metallic kind of like brownish dark brownish color it's very metallic and it's very pretty 
This one I like a lot as well. And then this one here, I'm not crazy about it at all, which is Spell. It's very bright, and it's also kind of like shimmered, metallic, wet looking. Not my favorite. Um, just very, very bright. So it's not one of my favorite. But the highlight, let me tell y'all, the highlight is everything. Everything. So before we even get into the makeup thing, let's watch, not watch, but let's read the next Real Talk. Okay. Okay. Hey, April. My name is India. Fake name. On May 2nd, 2017, I had weight loss surgery. Everything is going great. I ended the year of 2017 with losing at least half of a person. My start weight being 320 pounds and my weight now being 210. I'm so proud and happy with my new lifestyle. The problem isn't keeping up with the new lifestyle that I have with healthy eating. It is that now men attract to me. I'm 22 years old, going to be 23 soon in February. Never have I had a boyfriend in my life. Never have I had sex. The problem is now at my new workplace, there have been two guys that approach me, not on a relationship type of level, but on a let's be friends and we're all grown and we'll do what we do and we know what it is type of level. The thing is, I want a relationship and I want someone to take time with me and be able to grow with me. But it's so hard nowadays to get a man that is willing to do that. Maybe it's because of my location. Both of these men are in their late 20s, early 30s. Both have kids. I have no children and I do not want any at this time in my life. Is it bad that I do speak to them here and they're leading them and leading them on? But sorry about that, guys my camera. Okay. Where was I at? I have no children and I do not want any at this time of my life. Is it bad that I do speak to them here and they're leading them on, but not, but knowing that when it comes down to it, I'm not going to fall, follow through. Keep in mind, I do tell them that they should stop wasting their time trying to talk to me and go and talk to someone else. They are so persistent on coming on to me and trying to communicate, but only on sexual conversations and how they basically kind of want a relationship, but a relationship with no title. And I know that I cannot commit myself to have to not having a title because we're not going to play my because I'm not going to play myself and I'm not just an around the way girl. Being that I'm not sexually active, it is getting hot down there, Miss April. And sometimes I just want something to rub up against it. Yet I'm really not ready for the pain of penetration and also just because I do not want to build any soul ties to anyone and be dick crazy. I know that my life can be better and I shouldn't have to put myself in a situation with someone who already has lived their best life. Neither one of these men know that I am a virgin. I don't think it's any of their business to know. I really don't have a problem, but just the fact that it's getting hot down there. I've never had any relationships and the first time I've I'm getting attention from people is from people who I know do not live up to my standards. I've never imagined that my first sexual encounters would be with just people who claim we are friends, that we're grown and it is what it is and we do what we do. I always picture me being in a relationship and getting to know someone and even if it's not forever, but at least I know I've had that experience. Miss April, can you just please give me some life advice and being able to be a strong woman and learning how to just say no and be stern with my choices? I know it's okay to be by myself, even if it's burning down there, not burning in an usher way, LOL. I also feel like I've been alone for so long. Like what is what is wrong with me? But then it's also like now that I've lost the weight, now you people want to talk to me. Why am I so conflicted, Miss April? Sorry for a long email. And even if it's not that important, I could ask my friends, but they're in their 20s and also they're active. And I don't think they would understand it coming from my end that I used to be big and this is all new to me. I can't really explain this to my mom. We're Haitian and she's really wouldn't understand. Thank you for taking your time to read this. And I love you. And I've been watching you ever since you lived in New York. I will attach some of my pictures. And she's so pretty with her light skin self with all her different wigs on. She is so, so pretty. So India is, how old is she? She is about to be 23 in February, okay? And she is a virgin. That's what's up. I wish I could say the same about my motherfucking self. I wish I could, meaning not right now, but... I wish I could say when I was 23 going on 23, 22 going on 23, that I was a virgin. No, I, I couldn't say that at all. 
but it would have been nice to been able to say that shit, okay? Let me tell you something, India. Let me just tell you this. Men can be such horn dogs. Like, seriously, I'm going to turn the light back on you guys. Ooh, bright light, bright light. They could be like some real big horn dogs. And you know what's so pathetic? When somebody can tell you, I don't want no relationship. You know, we're going to do what we do. We grown. This is what it's all about. I want to do what we do. That's just fucking red flag signs right there that that nigga ain't shit. This is not tender app. Nigga, don't come around me with that shit at the workplace. Talk about we grown. We do what we do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be in no relationship. The only relationship I want is, you know, no strings attached. We friends. We, we friends with benefits. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Don't even waste your time with people like that men women whatever don't waste your time talking to men like that because that's just the sorry sap of excuse so all they want they just basically just told you all i want from you is to get in your pants and for these two guys or however many guys is at your workplace talking to you about oh well let's be friends or Let's be friends with benefits and all of this shit. For all you know, these two jackasses, these two guys that, that keep approaching you at work, them two motherfuckers could be working together. Meaning, yeah, let me see if I could get that pussy first, dude. No, I'm going to try. So they could, they might have all bets on you. You know what I'm saying? That's for one. And here's for two. Don't fuck with nobody at the workplace. It's bad enough we make friends at the workplace and then we start hanging out with them and this shit. We start telling them our business. And then them same people that we thought was our friends that we met at the workplace who we've done hung out and then invited over at our fucking house. Those are those same motherfuckers that then went back to the workplace when your ass was not looking and told all your business to Linda and Tammy at the water fountain and then you found out that this bitch Sharon that you thought was your motherfucking friend to switch the whole story to fuck up and now y'all not friends and your ass might be on the verge of getting fired because you done cussed that bitch out at the water fountain and went to her motherfucking desk and threatened her, okay? So this is the part where I'm getting you guys to understand. Sometimes we don't need to be friends with everybody and sometimes shit is not supposed to be where the fuck it's supposed to be this is the workplace this ain't a dating service for one okay that's for one that's what the fuck you need to tell them for one this is the workplace we here to work we ain't here to be fucking talking to each other with sexual advancement now here's the one thing too if they keep coming around you talking uncomfortably to you talking about oh talking to you in sexual manners and all that shit that's sexual harassment okay what you can motherfucking do is report they asses and then they won't have no fucking job. So that's one thing that I would let them know ahead of time. Listen, if you open your mouth one more fucking time and disrespect me with any kind of sexual content, I'm going to take it to HR and let them know how you disrespectful to women here at the workplace. Two, let they ass know we work together. You not my type. I'm not that type of person. If you're looking for a tender date, then I just suggest that you download the fucking app and swipe to the left or right, whatever tickles your fancy, but I'm not that girl. Here's the thing with men and a lot of people these days. They really feel like, okay, relationships are just too overbloated. It's just too overworked. It's too overrated. Some people just don't want to be in a relationship. I get that. That's great. But that doesn't mean that you should go around fucking every Tom, Dick, and Harry, okay? Not at all. Now, here's the thing about being a virgin. I can't really relate to that no more because I'm 43 years old and I got five kids, okay? However, I will say this. Those of us who are alone and don't have anybody at home with us to cuddle at night, we do get itchy feelings. or Not even itchy feelings because that would be a yeast infection and don't nobody want that. But, And I don't even want to call it warm feelings and hot feelings down there because... That wouldn't be too good either. But we 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 do feel the, the urge to be touched, like you said, rubbed up against. Don't you think a bitch like me feel like that sometimes too? Like on some real shit? I told y'all motherfuckers last week when I was talking about the young lady who liked to watch porn and that she grown. A bitch like me watched the same shit too. Okay, we got toys, we got all kind of shit. But here's the thing, sweetheart. You are a virgin. 
And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I commend you because there's too many hotties and thotties out there in the world who will give it up for a piece of strip of bacon, okay, or a pair of shoelaces just to fucking go in their Reeboks. They ain't even trying to get the whole motherfucking sneaker or the whole pack of bacon, all right? But people have all kinds of diseases and things like that. And not only this do they have diseases, but they got all kind of crazy baby mamas, okay? And all kind of social media and all kind of shit. So, first of all, these niggas at your job got baby mamas, all kind of shit going on with them. And they work at your job, okay? Don't nobody want to be with nobody at the workplace, like on some real shit. They already got enough drama going on with them. Them niggas ain't got no money. They they got kids to take care of and support, all right? That's for one. For two, don't lower your standards for no low-life nigga on some real shit. You don't miss out on anything that you have never had, meaning, yes, you are a virgin right now, right now, okay? And that is like a huge change in life when you lose that shit. When you find the right person to lay down with or to have a relationship with, I promise you, it should not feel like you being pressured and it should not feel like you have to second guess that motherfucker. Okay? Even like if you, even, even you said, it may not be something forever, but at least you want to have the experience with that person and know that they care and they was there for you and you guys were together. Shit don't work out all the time, but make sure that it's not with some lame ass nigga who ain't even worth your fucking bag of Doritos, okay? Like, seriously, there are some men out there that ain't even worth the bag of Doritos that's sitting on your shelf at, at, at home. And them fucking shit chips could be stale as a motherfucker. They still ain't worth that shit. I wouldn't even give you a stale chip out the bag, okay? So don't waste your time on dudes that ain't worth the bag of motherfucking Doritos that been sitting on the shelf for too long. Like, seriously? For real. We got, we got enough of those motherfuckers in the world. Let's not give them our time. However, if I could change my virgin experience, the first time I had sex experience, I definitely would. Because... I was a teenager and I was so fucking stupid. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I don't know if I was trying to be cool or what, but I surely wish that I could change that shit now. Because if I could, I would have definitely changed who it was with. or Not even who it was with. That too. Some people, you know what? Some people laugh at people being virgins still. I don't know what for. Why would you laugh at somebody being a virgin? You just mad hating because your ass ain't one? Let me tell you something. I ain't no motherfucking virgin. We all know that. But I'll tell you what. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you ain't worth my time, nigga, you ain't getting none of this. Like I said, I wouldn't even give you a motherfucking stale Dorito chip off my motherfucking shelf if you wasn't worth my time. And that's point blank period. Like, I don't have time for that shit. I don't like this cup, that, that dark color lipstick. Okay, so like I was saying... Niggas say the, the wildest shit, like, for real. People say, some people say the craziest fucking shit there is. How you gonna ask somebody? I don't, you know what? I know this, not, this ain't even off topic, but how you, how are you a man? How, how do you fix your mouth to say, yo, I don't want to be in a relationship with you, but, you know, we grown, we could do what we want to do, you know, we know what time it is, let's just get this, it's like, how do you approach somebody and say some shit like that? Like, I would be so ashamed and embarrassed to say that to anybody. Like, yeah, we grown. We're going to do what we got to do. I don't want to be in a relationship with you, but I want to hit it. You know, you looking good. You got a fat. You got a fatty. and all. Like, some men be saying, like, the craziest shit. And it's so sad that some women will fall for that shit and be like, oh, my God. He think I'm cute because he want to hit it and all of this shit. Like... Bitch, he don't want nothing. He don't even think you cute. You look like a motherfucking turtle, bitch. He just want what's in your pants. Not saying that, India, you look like a turtle because she doesn't. But it's just, it amazes me 
the way that men could just come off to women and say like the craziest shit. Like, so it's okay for you to say to me, I just want to hit it. You know what I'm saying? I just, let me tell you, if some nigga was to say some shit like that to me, you better hope I don't smack the shit out of you for real. Like, cause I might have to smack the shit out of you for saying some shit like that to me. Like who the fuck says that to anybody? Like, you just want to hit it, but you don't want to be in it. Like, meaning you don't want to be in a relationship, but you just want to get yourself a piece. Like, all right, dude. Um, That right there is, like, grounds for slapping a motherfucker. Like, for real. Like, I would slap a motherfucker if they was to say some shit like that to me. Like, are you serious right now? Did you just say to me that you don't want to be in a relationship, but you want to get a piece of this? India. There's going to be so many temptations out there in the world. Let me get my wig before I finish this. Okay, so as I was saying, there are going to be so many temptations out there. And I get it. Sometimes we do get a little feisty or we get a little horny or we just want to be, we just want, oh, hold on. I had to fucking get shit together. So as I was saying, there's there's so many different temptations out there. And then there's so many different people out there. You know what I'm saying? Like being... Being who you are is not hard and it's not easy as well. And I'm pretty sure your mother wouldn't understand about life, you know, about being a virgin. She's going to tell you to remain a virgin. I'm going to tell you the same thing. To remain a virgin until the right one comes along. How do you know it's the right one? You know that old wives tale where they be like, you just going to feel it. You're going to know. You're going to just know that he is the one and it's the right time. That's what they all say. But here's the thing. The one way you know that that nigga is the right one is if he ain't sitting up there trying to get in your pants the second day or the first motherfucking day you meet him. That's how you know for sure. Okay? That's for definite. And also, if you got some nigga saying, well, you know, we grown and, you know... We grown ups, we could do this and that's when you just walk the fuck away. Like dead ass serious. Those type of motherfuckers, girl, please don't even waste your energy or your time. Walk away from them at the water cooler. Okay? Walk the fuck away from them. Stay a virgin for as long as you can because the person that you supposed to have sex with the first time. They supposed to be something worthy, meaning your stuff down there is well worth waiting for. And if they can't commit and be in a relationship with you and they don't want to give you what you deserve, then what you can give them is the middle finger and your backside with the sun, sunshine back there. Okay. The sun motherfucking shine back there. But you can give them not to kiss. Let me tell you something. Just like I said, I cannot believe that niggas... Men in general, because that's what they like to call themselves, men, have the audacity to say things like that to women. But you know what? I think, I think, let me tell you something, and I'm not knocking nobody if they use that app. That's, hey, that's your preference. But this is what I feel like. I think that men in general say things like so blatantly and so bold like that because some women just don't care, meaning... And, and and the same thing goes for women and men and men go for it. The same thing. Some of them just don't care. They don't have like enough self-respect for themselves. They don't have enough self-morals for themselves. Like, and I think that men find it okay to say things like that to women. Like, you know, we grown, we could do what we do. I think they feel like it's okay because there's so many of this social media shit. And there's so many of these apps that allow them to just find some pussy just, just that fast. Like, seriously, like you can go on an app and meet up with somebody the same night just for some head. Like, I, I, I really didn't believe that. Um, I forget who told me about Tinder. And I thought it was a joke. Like, when they was telling me about it, I was like, stop lying. That There's no such of a thing. And it was like, it is a such of a thing. You can hook up with somebody on Tinder just so that you can get a piece. And I just was like, are you serious? Like, I don't know. Maybe I need to get in the loop about things. Meaning not trying, but like, 
read up on shit more. I just really could not believe that there was such a thing where you can you can look on an app and if you guys both find one another attractive, y'all can meet up later and get it popping in the bedroom in the boudoir. Like, damn. And AIDS is not an epidemic? Okay. Is that, did they find a motherfucking cure for that shit? Because I don't remember them finding a cure for that shit. Did they find a cure for crazy? Because these motherfuckers that y'all meet up with, not many y'all, but whoever, half these motherfucking people could be crazy. You could be meeting up with a serial killer. For all you know, a serial killer with a big dick. And you don't even know that he's a serial killer. You just want to get laid for the night. And then this nigga chopped your ass up to pieces, okay? <sighs> or better yet, wanted to give you what he got and he can't get rid of it. Like herpes or AIDS or some some crazy shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It, and so that's where I feel like men... They feel like they can say whatever they want to say to women these days because they got all these crazy fucking apps out that women are be on and just be like, yeah, oh, what's up, boo? You want to come through? Like, I'm trying to figure out what's the sense of these apps. Like, what do people get out of them? Like, I don't know. It take a me. A if I don't know you, we're not about to have sex. Like, seriously, I, I just can't. I don't become. I wouldn't be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be comfortable fucking you, and I don't even know you. Like, I guess because I'm so insecure about myself. Like, meaning I have my own insecurities. Like, I have my insecurities about how my body look. I have my own insecurities. So, I just wouldn't want to be meeting up with nobody and having sex with them. Like, what if they stuff smell? Like, what if they really not them? That's not really they picture. They really ugly, and then you meet up with them. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if they stuff is little? Just, like, what if they got a disease? What if they crazy? They gonna kill me? Like, I be just thinking, like, all kind of... I'm a paranoid person, to be honest. I think about all kind of shit. What if they find out where I live? And then, like, what if it's, like, a subscriber? Like, all kind of shit. I think anything possible. You know what I'm saying? This is this just the shit. What if they just want to rob me? Like, this is the shit that I be thinking. And I know that's fucked up. But that's just my way of thinking about a lot of shit because I'm just a paranoid person in general. So I just think of like the weirdest shit. Not, it ain't even weird. It's just the shit that I think of. And I and I guess it helps me in, in general. But I have always been a paranoid person. Even as a kid, I would feel like my mother was five minutes late and where the hell is she at? She taking too long to come home. Shit like that. I'm a paranoid person. But I think like because of these type of apps, men find it to be okay to say certain things to women like that. You know what I'm saying? And that really sucks because there are women out there that really are not like that, like India, who ain't into all of that shit. And like me, like I ain't into that shit. Like, you ain't about to be trying to tell me, I wish a nigga would say some shit like that to me. That'd be my line. I wish a nigga would, okay? That's probably what I'm going to title this video. I wish a nigga would. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish a nigga would come up to me and say some shit like that. I'd probably smack the shit out of him. Or if I don't smack the shit out of him, I would fucking go off and diss the shit out of him. He would he would have rather got smacked by the time I finished tongue, tongue lashing him, okay? He would rather have gotten smacked. That would be the thing, like... He would rather have gotten smacked. Like, damn, this bitch might as well have just fucking kicked me between my legs and punched me in my face for the shit that she just said to me. That, that I feel like when a man says some shit like that, I feel really disrespected. Like, how dare you say to me, oh, we could just do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, how fucking dare you? Don't you dare. And I wouldn't even waste my time explaining to him that I ain't that type of girl. I wouldn't even waste my time saying that shit. I would just fucking go the fuck off and let him have it and then go about my business. That that would just be me. You know what I'm saying? That would just be me. Like, I would feel so insulted and freaking disrespected if a man was to say to me, you know, oh, um, what's up? We can just do this or whatever the fuck they say. That's how I would feel like, I know you just did not say that shit to me. Like, um, what? Let me tell you something, India. You're going to come across a whole bunch of motherfucking men that ain't even worth your time. 
Okay, and if you swing the other way, you're going to come across a whole bunch of bitches that ain't worth your time to. All right, even friends in general. So be really skeptical about who you give your time to and who you even tell you a virgin to. Don't tell nobody that shit. Continue doing you. And I promise you, I promise you. I mean, yeah, it might get hard. You see a relationship. It's nice to be in a relationship. But let me tell you this much. It ain't all what it's cracked out to be. Meaning. Being in a relationship is a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. Especially if you have somebody that's worth it and who's worth your time. But if you don't, then it's not worth your time. It's not worth it. When you go looking for a relationship, it you you come back with 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 some bullshit. Okay? Shit happens when it's supposed to happen. Don't go out there looking for a relationship. Even if you never had a relationship before, you're still very young, so that's okay. But when you start looking to be in a relationship, you get the wrong type of man. But it seems like you have your head strung on really well and yourself put together to know that this is not the type of people that I want to be around, which is a good thing. And I commend you for that. But here's the thing, like I said, about those at the workplace... Those men at the workplace, let them know, sweetheart. We at the workplace. I don't date anybody at the workplace. And if you keep talking to me disrespectful, I will report you to H&R. HR, whatever you guys want to call it, I will report you to HR. It's not appropriate, okay? That's one, how you can get them to stop talking to you like that. For two, just keep in mind, these people at the workplace, you don't need to be hanging out with them. You go there for a paycheck, not for no dick, not for no friends. I told you guys before, when you make friends at the workplace, that's like you making enemies. Don't even set yourself up for failure with these motherfucking people at the workplace. It's cool to have friends, but just be very skeptical and mindful who you fucking with at the workplace. Friends, foe, family, whatever. Be very skeptical. For two, yes, niggas will come a dime a dozen and they say the fucking outlandish shit. I swear to you, I kid you not. Men say the most outlandish shit. Who the fuck says some dumb shit like that? Well, you know, we can get it popping and all of this shit. You know, I don't want a relationship, but we grown. I wouldn't even fix my mouth to say some shit like that to anybody. I would feel real embarrassed. But, you know, that's people for you. That's how some motherfuckers are and they just don't have no fucking... They have no coof. A lot of people don't have no coof. But you know what, honey? When the time comes for your relationship, you will find one. Dead ass serious. Don't worry about the motherfuckers at the workplace. But definitely don't keep them around you. Keep your surrounding circle very small and you will find the right one. Listen, sex is a beautiful thing and sometimes it ain't. Okay? Depending on who or what it is and what it, who it is with. Okay? But here's the thing. Don't give yourself up to just any time to get hairy. Just be mindful. If I could be a virgin again, I probably would. Then again, I probably wouldn't. I don't know. I would probably just have gave it up to my husband, and that would have been the only person, and because it was well worth it. His listen, that's my business. But I do have my doubts about who I've given it up to in the past, and you really don't want to be there because giving it up to just anybody is really not cool. And then you have your regrets, okay? I have had my regrets about many people, not many people like I've had a lot of people, but many people in general, as in family, friends, relationships, all that cool shit. And now I'm very mindful and skeptical about who I give anything to, meaning a friendship, a call to, or anything like that. I'm very mindful. In the way the world is today, I wouldn't. So just be patient. The right one is going to come along for you. I promise you that because of the person you are. And just be focused on you. Trust and believe, Mr. Right will soon come along. So on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. Happy New Year. Leave everything down below. I got to go to Chuck E. Cheese and have birthday celebrations.